Questions grow about the number of Ukrainians taken into Russia against their will. No one knows exactly how many, but Ukraine's President Zelensky says he believes the number could be as high as 2 million. Many of them forced to go through so-called filtration camps that human rights groups claim are set up to erase Ukrainian identity, particularly in those communities close to areas now controlled by Russia. But Moscow denies the camps exist, so we sent our Inez de la Guterra to the region, and this is what she heard. It was the last place he wanted to end up in. But three months after Russian forces began bombarding his country, Edward Makarchan found himself deep in enemy territory, pushed out against his will from Ukraine to Russia. How can I stay in the country that destroyed my life? The Ukrainian government and U.S. officials estimate there could be as many as 1.6 million Ukrainian civilians, including more than 260,000 children who, like Edward, were forcibly relocated to Russia. They're sent to so-called filtration camps, checkpoints in Russian-held areas where Ukrainians are detained and interrogated. Edward made it out, and he eventually fled Russia by crossing into Estonia. But his odyssey starts in Mariupol. Edward was inside when his apartment was shelled. He was injured and evacuated. At a checkpoint, he asked to go to western Ukraine. I told the woman that I wanted to go to Zaporizhia, but she answered that there is no Zaporizhia anymore. A Russian military man was standing nearby who said that Kyiv had already surrendered. Mariupol was completely destroyed. No power, no way to communicate, no way of knowing what was really going on. I thought it was the end, so that woman said you could go to Rostov in Russia or Donetsk. There were only two options. He ended up in the city of Taganrog, where he says he was again misled, told to get on a train he thought would be going to Rostov, but instead went further into Russia. He says refugees there were used as pawns paraded in front of state media cameras that waited for them on the train platform. I was deceivingly taken to Russia. The Russian news said that we were saved from the Nazis. They needed this crowd. The whole time, Edward traveling with a physical reminder of the harm Russia had done him. After finally getting medical care in Russia, he made his way back to the EU, crossing into Estonia at the border town of Narva. You can see Russia is just over that bridge down there. All of the refugees we've spoken with here in Estonia, this is how they've crossed over, either on buses or on foot. And some of them tell us it wasn't until they reached Estonia that they finally felt safe. This former cruise ship in Tallinn now houses more than 1,800 Ukrainian refugees with stories similar to Edward's. It was the only way. We wanted to go through Ukraine to Zaporizhia, but we're not allowed to go there. Buses have been canceled. These people don't have a choice. They have to comply because the de facto choice, the only option that they have, is to remain in the street and die under shelling. All of the Ukrainian refugees we spoke with say they were interrogated by Russian officials for hours on end. This man and his mother spending four days at one filtration facility. You have to fill out a form. There are different questions. For example, do you have relatives in the armed forces of Ukraine? Do you know about the location of Ukrainian military bases? And so on. Their fingerprints were taken, phones hooked to a machine and probed. Men strip-searched for tattoos that could indicate military affiliation. Around eight times I take off my clothes. They called each man for interrogation, asked them to undress, took their fingerprints and checked their phones. Then came my turn. They asked me to undress. They asked me the meaning of every tattoo on my body. They deliberated a long time whether or not to let me go. I realized that they could kill me here. The U.S. mission to the OSCE says there are at least 18 filtration camps along the Ukraine-Russia border, just like the one in this video that shows a school east of Mariupol where Ukrainians were set to be held by Russian forces in early May. These are forcible deportations of civilian populations against their will. That constitutes a war crime. They're trying to take away Ukrainians who might have Ukrainian civic impulses, who are patriots, who want to defend their country. 
Those who pass the Russians' interrogations are handed this document, which allows them to travel to and within Russia. But for those who don't, ominous tales of torture and people disappearing. They check all the documents, and if they don't like something, they take everyone to Donetsk, put them in the basement, and talk there. If you are lucky, after three days, you may return limping on both legs. The woman who was sitting next to me in the filtration camp, her husband had been gone for two weeks. He was taken away for filtration and not returned. There were at least 10 women I spoke with who had similar stories. The Kremlin denies it is forcibly relocating Ukrainians to Russia, arguing instead it is taking refugees to safety. Forcibly relocated refugees with no means to travel within Russia and nowhere to stay are then placed in refugee centers. Edward ended up there under the watchful eye of Russian officials. It was like a jail. The territory is fenced and there is a checkpoint. I had to walk my dog and they gave me a hard time leaving. Every time someone left, they had to sign where they were going and give a phone number. They even searched you after you came back. This refugee says he never got the financial aid refugees were promised and describes dire conditions at the shelter where he stayed for three months. There were three meals a day, but sometimes it was not cooked or the food was raw. It became simply unbearable because it was impossible to eat anything. Refugees are also told to apply for temporary asylum in order to be able to work or get medical care. But some tell us their Ukrainian passports were taken from them during the process. Edward says he and others were pressured to apply for Russian citizenship. Police on duty at the entrance of the shelter would tell people to go for citizenship meetings. No one could refuse. They said there are no application forms for asylum and that it would take too long. They kept pushing for citizenship. Just this week, Russian President Vladimir Putin signing a new decree fast-tracking and simplifying the procedure for any Ukrainian seeking Russian citizenship. Now, as Russia fights for full control of eastern Ukraine, concerns that the problem could worsen and that even more refugees might find themselves trapped in Russia. As for Edward, Justin. when asked where it is he'd really like to end up, he tells us not Russia, not Europe, but home in Ukraine. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.